Hey guys, my name is Sina. I'm a business professor and a Bitcoin consultant and researcher at 21st Capital. So today I'm going to talk about the reason the markets are crashing so hard. It's actually three different events that are happening at the same time and uh, putting a lot of sell pressure on the market. S&P 500 and Dow posted their worst drop since 2022. Markets have uh, entered correction territories. Uh, Bitcoin is falling hard and uh, everybody's uh, panicking. So let's see what's going on and what are the reasons this is happening. So uh, I'm going to talk about three factors. One is the economy and the labor market, whose uh, recent uh, data makes uh, investors very concerned. And then we will talk about the yen carry trade. And lastly, we will talk about the geopolitical tensions. It's not uncommon for several things to happen at the same time, but uh, this is a pretty interesting uh, coincidence. So let's see what's going on and what are the likely scenarios for future. All right, so why are the markets crashing? S&P has fallen by about 8% since its highs. NASDAQ about 13%, Dow about 6%. And in, in uh, just today, which is Monday, uh, August 5th, Dow and S&P posted their worst day since 2022. Why is this happening? First one is the economy and the labor market. The June data we got about labor market was very concerning because uh, it missed the predictions by a large amount. It really disappointed the investors by showing only 114K new jobs being created. And as you can see in this chart, this is a pretty uh, low number given the recent history, and it's actually confirming a pretty consistent downtrend. It's also noteworthy that in the last three months, we are observing back-to-back uh, -back declines in this metric. So even though 100,000 jobs being created is not a bad number necessarily, but the trend is very concerning and investors are worried that this might continue to go down and especially accelerate as happens in many uh, recessions. Essentially, the pattern is uh, the job market, you know, seems great, seems great, begins ticking up, begins ticking up. And then suddenly, once everyone realizes we are in a dire shape, uh, it begins going up. And this is where a later will be classified as the start of a recession. So investors are very worried that they might get surprised in the future months. And as you can see, unemployment has also ticked up from 4.1% to 4.3% in July. In 2023, it, it was at its lowest point, 35 and it uh, began growing slowly. And then in the last couple of months, it has rapidly risen. And this month was pretty concerning. And it, uh, uh, like I said, it, it might continue going up like that. And the reason this is concerning is that in all of the prior recessions, the same pattern has repeated. Here we are observing a rapid rise from a bottom. If you look at the prior recessions, they were all looking like this. For example, in 2008, unemployment was close to five, but it was at a local bottom. And it was slowly increasing and increasing and increasing and suddenly jumped up. So it quickly turns from a linear growth to a nonlinear growth and, again, surprises everybody. Same thing happened in 2000. Uh, unemployment rate was very low. As you can see, you know, people might have been here uh, saying that the economy is doing great, but the rapid rise from the low marked the beginning of the recession. Same thing happened in the 1990s. Relative to what where the unemployment was previously, this number was very low. But then a rapid rise from the low marked recession, same thing here, 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 here. And every recession has behaved like that. The unemployment goes to the local minimum. It stays there for a while. It begins ticking up and suddenly it... And there are also other factors that confirm investors' worries, and which is, for instance, the slow growth of wages and the warnings that have been issued by some of the retailers like McDonald's that said low-income consumers are really struggling. Uh, so that's the first reason economic fundamentals. And the second reason is the Japanese yen carry trade, which is blowing up. What is this carry trade? It's the biggest carry trade in the world. 
And the way it worked was that because Japanese government dropped the rates to pretty much flat zero for a long time, a lot of investors around the world, hedge funds, institutions, they were able to buy yen, uh, borrow yen at a very low rate, almost zero percent, and then uh, invest somewhere else. Let's say you find a good investment opportunity in the United States. You can go to Japan, borrow yen, at 0% interest rate or some something close to that, and then convert your yen uh, to dollars and invest those dollars in whatever investment you find in the US. If, you know, you could have invested in, in just S&P, NASDAQ for, for a much larger returns, or you could even uh, have invested this in the safest possible thing, which is uh, treasury bills, and those right now pay 4 to 5% which is a lot higher than the 0% that you have to pay back on your money. So this was a great trade and kind of an arbitrage that was provided by the artificial uh, manipulation of the market uh, by the Bank of Japan. But this trade blew up because the uh, Japanese central bank decided to hike their rates because they are worried about inflation and the increase in the price of oil. So that uh, made the carry trade a lot less attractive and... Um, uh, narrowed the interest rate gap between the US dollar and the Japanese yen and caused uh, the yen to appreciate. You can see the appreciation uh, from early July to now. Uh, the USD JPY went down from 162 to 144. So yen has appreciated a lot. And all of the investors that I explained previously that had borrowed yen now have a much bigger um, obligation. So they have to sell a lot more dollars to raise the same amount of yen to pay back their debt, which means they have to sell all of those investments that they had made in the US and, and international opportunities. So the stock market is sold, uh, T-bills are sold, everything else everywhere else has to be sold to make up for this uh, appreciation of the Japanese yen. And that starts a self-reinforcing cycle that will in turn make Japanese yen even more and more strong and uh, it causes a death spiral. But this trade is losing attractiveness as I explained and it's squeezing the investors. And the last reason for the market's jitters is the tensions in the Middle East. As you know, uh, a senior Hamas figure was assassinated in Tehran by Israel, and, and in Iran is planning planning an attack, a retaliation right now. Because investors don't know how this will play out, they uh, are faced with a massive tail risk. It is a low probability e event in terms of uh, hurting the global economy in a significant way, but it also has a uh, there, there's also a chance that this turns into a really big mess. Uh, one of the simplest things it can cripple is the oil supply chain. So there's a small probability, but if that happens, it's going to be a big effect on the global economy. So investors also have to think about that tail risk. The combination of all these three reasons is pushing investors to safer assets, to cash and gold. So, so where are we going in the future? Um, if you notice, the geopolitical tensions, uh, they have been there for a long time and they just spike for some time and go away after a few weeks. So that is, you know, by, by nature, short term, it might turn out to be nothing. So uh, that will go away qu pretty quickly. The carry trade will blow up, uh, probably take another, you know, a month or two months until it's fully un unwound and we, we see the final effect. So that's also short term. Uh, and and looks like that the market right now is driven more by panic and emotion than fundamental analysis. So that typically means people are overselling and there might be a bounce um, from, from the lows that we are seeing right now. However, that says nothing about the fundamentals of the economy, which is deteriorating uh, pretty consistently. So the risks on that front remain high. But as we kind of see the real effects on the economy, we will see uh, periods where investors suddenly wake up to the facts that the economy is weak and they panic sell. Those might actually be pretty good buying opportunities. But uh, I prefer uh, slow, step-by-step, -step and methodical 
entry into the market right now because this is not going to end immediately and it's going to we, we need several months uh, uh, of data to really understand where we are going. You can find me on Twitter at Sina underline 21st. Be sure to check out our website. We are a new company uh, in the Bitcoin space that provides uh, consulting and custody services. We provide education. So if you want us to educate yourself or your partners and loved ones about Bitcoin or technical side of it, economic side of it, uh, we provide courses for that. We sometimes uh, develop uh, custom courses for specific clients. We also provide technical and security consultation if you have concerns about how to store your uh, your Bitcoin, uh, how to use a hardware wallet, how to set up single SIG, multi SIG um, vaults, uh, or if you'd like collaborative custody where we also hold some of the keys for you so you have some peace of mind in terms of not losing your backup. We provide those services. We provide the strategic financial planning services, uh, Bitcoin payment integration, legacy planning, and recovery and emergency services as well. Uh, reach out to us. You can book a free 30-minute session with us to just go over what you might need and how we can help. And then we can move on from there. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention. If you in fact found value in this video, be sure to like and share and subscribe. Uh, also comment if you had any question, just write it below uh, on YouTube or on Twitter. I typically read all the comments and answer them to the best of my abilities. Looking forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next video.